Welcome back everyone. Have you ever wondered how automotive traction control works? Well today we're going to build a simple traction controller for an RC car using hall sensors and an Arduino. Now traction control in motorsports is a divisive topic but the reality is every driver will be more consistent in a car with traction control and consistent traction is exactly what I need for my radio controlled land speed racer project. Uh, due to radio limitations, I typically stand about a thousand feet away or 300 meters away from the car when I start my speed runs. At that distance, I can just barely make out the car and there's no way that I can see whether or not the wheels are spinning. So I've tried a number of different approaches to manage wheel spin, but none of them could take into account road surface irregularities without being far too conservative. So why am I not testing this out on my streamliner itself? Well, I'm currently traveling the country in an RV and I don't have access to a paved testing location, so the testing is going to fall on the old RC10T. Implementing traction control on an RC car is fairly straightforward. I've hot glued four magnets on a single front and rear wheel on one side of the car. I've also installed a very small digital latching hall sensor on the car suspension facing these magnets. The latching part of the name means the sensor only changes state when the alternating magnetic pole passes by the sensor. So if the four magnets on the wheels are installed facing north, south, north, south. Uh, this outputs a really nice square wave signal for the Arduino to read, where each pulse represents one half of the wheel's rotation. Using the Arduino, we can measure the pulse duration and then calculate the actual wheel speed. Now, there are a lot of very complex traction control algorithms out there, but it's always best to start small and add complexity as needed. So I selected a widely used and effective approach to dynamic traction control, and that is to manage traction based on the percent difference in speed between the driven and non-driven wheels. In this case, we're looking at how fast the front wheel is spinning in relation to the rear wheel. If the rear wheel is spinning faster than the front wheel, then the Arduino calculates the percentage difference. If that percentage exceeds a configurable threshold, then the Arduino reduces the throttle. Now, a common misconception is that traction control aims to eliminate all wheel spin, but in reality, due to the elasticity of rubber and differing surface conditions, there is in fact some value greater than zero of slippage that results in maximum acceleration, typically between five and 10% on pavement. I should also point out something that the engineering minded viewers may have noticed. I only have sensors on one side of the vehicle. If I make a turn, the inside and the outside wheels will rotate at different speeds, which requires a completely different method for calculating the relative front and rear wheel speeds. Now I have the sensors on both sides, so this shouldn't be too much of an issue, and I'm really focused on straight line acceleration for this particular setup. Also, this car has a differential, which I have set very tight, but regardless, the wheel with the least traction will spin first. Uh, but these issues are mostly irrelevant for my streamliner, which will travel completely in a straight line, is extremely long, very narrow, and only has a single rear wheel. For now, I've chosen a simple proportional control strategy with just three inputs. Uh, first is the percent slip between the front and the rear that we've calculated earlier. Second is the target maximum percent slip. And the last is a throttle correction factor if there is too much slip. Uh, the equation is fairly straightforward. I simply subtract the target maximum percent slip from the actual percent slip, which gets me an error. I then multiply this error by the correction factor, which gives me an amount in microseconds to adjust the throttle by. I'm manually going to tune this system depending on conditions, so I'm taking in the target percent slip and the correction factor from the RC car transmitter. I'm not chasing the absolute peak acceleration possible at any given second, but rather consistency and controllability. Now, wouldn't it be nice if all this had worked the first time? Well, that's definitely not the case. I spent a few weeks sorting through some of these issues, not in small part due to not having an oscilloscope. The first challenge was electrical noise causing false sensor pulses. Uh, this RC car is an antique and as such has a very old ESC and a brush motor, which cause all kinds of electrical noise in the wiring and the power supply for the Arduino. The hall sensors worked great when the motor wasn't spinning or if the ESC was near full throttle, Otherwise, they were just pulsing a few thousand times a second. This was primarily an issue with the outdated A3144 hull sensor I initially used. A shielded cable and some filtering capacitors uh, mostly solved this. The next issue was managing the distance between the hull sensors and the magnets. Um, because I had to mount the hull sensors to the RC car suspension, uh, they would move around a small amount relative to the magnet, 
which caused the A314-4 hull sensor to either create false pulses or to be out of range of the magnets. So I switched to a much newer DRV5015, which is a tiny surface mount hull sensor meant for high speed motor commutation, which is great because it's about 10 times more sensitive magnetic fields and it's a latching type sensor and less prone to false triggering. So after a lot of tuning, I set up to perform some time test runs. I performed three runs using the following five maximum slip rates, 0%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and 100% slip, which is essentially no traction control at all. For all of the tests, I just smashed the throttle and I did my best to try to keep the car in a straight line. Given how rudimentary this traction controller is, I was really surprised at just how effective it was. I wasn't expecting a slip rate as high as 20% to be the fastest, but obviously dirt is very different from pavement. And strangely enough, the car was extremely consistent with a 20% slip rate, with times varying by less than 3 tenths of a second between runs. With slip rates less than 10%, the car had a hard time moving forward and tended to just oscillate between wheel spin and the traction control kicking in. The biggest improvement I see myself implementing is smoothing the transition back to throttle. As you can see in the clips, the traction control oscillates a lot. It cuts the throttle hard and then as soon as the slip goes away, it's back to the previous throttle amount. I think adding a slew rate based on the amount of traction cut would make it much smoother and allow the throttle to come back more gradually and not lose traction. Another improvement I need to add is anti-lock braking. Because the Streamliner uses a single rear wheel for all of its braking, the rear wheel tends to lock up and the car crashes. ABS should just be some additional Arduino code that runs when braking. If the pulses to the rear hull sensor are suddenly too long, then the controller will stop braking momentarily until the wheel regains traction. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Let me know in the comments if you found this interesting or if you have any ideas for improvements I can make. Traction control is really just a stepping stone to more advanced control topics like torque vectoring, which I have a lot of interest in as well. I'll put a link in the description below to all the code for this if you want to take a look and try to build your own. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.